Welcome to the second devlog for my tank game. I don't actually have a title for it yet, but my codename for it is Able Archer, which is taken from the 1983 NATO exercise that almost led to a nuclear war. The Soviets were pretty paranoid at the time, and they thought they were gonna get attacked, so in turn they prepared to attack. This is actually the setting that I'm thinking for my game. Late Cold War around the border between East and West Germany, but the story and the plots for the future. Today, I'll show you how I added projectile firing, explosions, and destruction to my game. So here's what I have right now. There's two tanks. The blue tank is the player tank, and the red tank's the enemy tank. Right now, the enemy tank is just set to auto fire. Every three seconds, it fires a shell, and when that shell hits a tree, it explodes, and that opens up a movement path. Here's how I made all of that. I just have one tank scene, and I change its appearance and behavior based on the type of tank that it is. And that data is in an auto-loaded singleton called game data, and it has what type of texture the tank should have, uh, whether it should handle input or not, what initial state it should start with in the state machine, and then also the, the, shell, the shell's texture if it's blue for P1 and uh, red for the enemy. The tank scene itself has a bunch of new nodes. I have a rotation position, which is a position 2D, and that helps with rotating the sprite and the position of the barrel. When the tank is moving, I just rotate it. And then I have a barrel position, which is where the shell spawns when the tank fires, and a point blank detector, which is an area 2D. and the point blank detector is here because it helps position the explosion uh, if we're firing at or near point blank range. And then I have a reload timer, which I, I don't allow the tank to just constantly fire. You can't just keep firing by hitting the spacebar all the time. So the timer stops that and then a reloaded sound. So this helps the player uh, know when the reload cooldown is over. So here's the script for the tank scene. The ready function configures the tank based on what's in game data and what type of tank it's set as in the export variable. And if the tank is set to auto fire, then the reload timer's timeout signal is connected to the fire function. And that's how it just keeps on firing once the reload timer times out. If the tank is not set to auto fire, then the timeout is on, is connected to the reload complete function, which plays the sound. If the tank is set to actually handle input, if it's controlled by the player, then when the fire button is pressed, spacebar, and it's not reloading, then the reloading boolean is set to true, and the reload timer is started, and then it calls the fire function. The fire function itself, it takes the current position the current rotation of the tank and the barrel's global position and then it generates a fire effect um, at the tip of the barrel which is a little sprite that looks like a fire and then it, uh, it determines whether we're at point blank range by checking the point blank detector if it has any overlapping bodies and then it gathers all of that into a shell parameter dictionary which is then emitted as a shot fired signal. Uh, all of this is necessary so that the shell is created with the right variables. And then if we're at point blank, then the point blank exploded signal is also emitted with the point blank detector's uh, global position. And this reload sound isn't actually that good for the game. It sounds like this which is the sound of a handgun cocking that I found on YouTube's audio library. Ideally, it should sound like this. But I couldn't find a creative common sound like that, so this will do for now. The shot fired signal and the point blank exploded signal is listened to by the map scene. and. 
It connects the shot fired signal to the create shell function and point blank exploded signal to the create explosion function. The create shell function, this is what instances the shell and I add it as a child of the map scene rather than the tank scene because I want the shell to continue existing in the world even if the tank that fired it is killed. For example, if I added the shell as a child of the ma of the tank, then when the tank is freed, its uh, child shell also gets freed, and I don't want that. The create explosion is the same thing. It adds the explosion as a child of the map scene. Here's the explosion scene, and it's a pretty simple scene with a sprite and the an animation player and an audio stream player, and I animate the modulate property of the sprite, and it's pretty simple and that's good enough for now. The script is a reusable effect animation class, and basically it starts the animation and starts the sound, and whoever finishes last gets uh, to call Q3. I do the same thing for fire effect. The animation is a bit longer for fire effect. Here is the shell scene, and what I want for the shell is I want it to st travel in a straight line and then explode when it hits something. So it's a kinematic body 2D, and the collision layer is set to 1-1. One, one. Actually everything in the game right now is set to this collision layer, which means everything collides with everything else, and it also means that enemy tanks can kill each other. I might change that in the future, uh, we'll see. The script for the shell is, it has, well, it has the initialize function, which is called before ready, and this sets the position of the shell, its rotation, and its texture. And then once the shell is added as a child of the map scene, then the ready function is called. It calculates its move direction uh, by using the rotation that it was given, and then the physics process function starts getting called. And this is just, it, it calls move and slide for the kinematic body 2D, which moves it. And then I uh, check for collisions with the handle collision function. The handle collision, it if there's no collision, then it returns immediately. If there is a collision, then I check whether it's the tank that fired it, and then I just ignore that. And if it's not that, and the collider, or the thing that it collided with, has a take hit function, then call that take hit function with the collision position passed to it, and then Q3. Q3 is always called, that way uh, if it collides with the border of the map, if the shell collides with the border of the map, then it is freed and it doesn't travel infinitely uh, in the game consuming memory. To remove trees from the map, the movement exclude tile set scene has a take hit function, and given the position of the hit, it figures out which tree to remove, and then it removes it. The result of all of that is you can have tanks that destroy trees. You can have uh, shells that destroy each other. And then you can have the player get killed by the enemy tank. Alright, that's it for this week's devlog. In the next video, I'll show how I implemented a star from scratch in GDScript. If you think that's interesting, you can subscribe. Thank you, and goodbye.